Hello everybody, welcome to the first episode of Chats with the Farmer's Daughter. Um, at least I think that's what I'm calling this podcast. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I've always wanted to do a podcast, um, but it's kind of cringy talking to yourself, I'm not gonna lie. I started one, I think when I started Farmer's Daughter Fibers in 2016, and I deleted the episodes like a few years ago because they were so bad. Actually, my kids found them and were making fun of me, which was really funny. Um, you know, your kids will always be honest with you and they were bad. So yeah, I deleted them and I've gotten more comfortable over the years in front of the camera. So I think I'm ready. I'm really excited about this. I wanted to you know, find a way to make connections with um, our customers and our fiber friends and our knitters and crafters. And I was telling a friend of mine last weekend about it and she has a popular knitting podcast and she was like, you should do it. It's amazing. It feels really good and it's a really good community. So here I am. Um, a couple of things. I talk with my hands a lot. Um, I don't know if that's going to be distracting, but I do have nice nails. So, um, and I do cuss. So if you were offended by cussing, I'll try to keep it at a level, but things might fly. You just never know. I just want to give those warnings out right now. Um, maybe I'll like sit on my hands so I don't sit there and bleh the entire time. Um, the other thing too is I'm not going to edit this. I may edit once in a while, um, but for the most part, I really want it to be authentic and not a huge job for me. Like I want to be able to just post these and post the notes on the podcast and then we're done. Um, I want to grow it, so make sure you subscribe um, into something even more, which I'm really excited about, but I just want to see how this goes first. Um, and yeah, so I have a kind of cousin, um, cousin of a cousin. Uh, his name is Dougie Hall, and if you follow on him on Instagram, he's a cowboy, and he always um, starts his little videos with, um, if you like what I say, you can take it, and if you don't like it, you can leave it. So that is also going to be my motto for this podcast. Um, I think that's kind of it for introductions. Um, my name is Candace English. I am the owner of Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Um, so yeah, I think that's it uh, for that. <laughs> um, I asked yesterday on Instagram, I don't know, I think I'm going to try and post this today. So this is Friday, May 13th, um, for some sort of relevance, but if I don't do it till next week, then you know. Um, but I asked yesterday on Instagram, like, what do you want to know in a podcast? What would you be interested in hearing about? I got a lot of really great responses and I am going to take some of those into account. I'm not going to have like something I'm like doing every single time or like themes. I'm just going to chat. So a lot of this podcast will be me talking about like what's new in the store, what we're doing at Farmer's Daughter Fibers, um, maybe traveling stuff, what I'm working on, sweaters, like all the knitting things that we're doing. And then I'll also talk about like books that I'm reading, um, all of those things. So one of the things that people kind of repeatedly asked was to like tell our story, tell more about Sisters United, which is our nonprofit. And while I would love to do that, it's a lot of time and energy and very uncomfortableness to talk about myself. So I'm going to give you a couple of recommendations if you do want to hear more about like how FDF started, more about Sisters United. Um, one of them is last year we were featured in the Montana Women magazine. Um, and this is a really amazing magazine. It's $5. It's super inexpensive. Um, I have tons of copies of this issue, which is issue 11, because when you're on the cover of a magazine, you're going to get lots of them. So, uh, yeah. So issue 11, this is on our website under books and magazines. I'll put a link in. I don't need to say that. Um, I'll put a link in below, but we did a little story about us, how we started, all of those things. So this is a great way if you want to know more about us. 
um, you can look at this. And then also we were just featured in the latest Lina Magazine, issue number 14. Um, and they did a big story. And this was really focused around Sisters United is mainly what it was. Um, and also kind of my journey of healing in Farmer's Daughter Fibers and Sisters United about missing and murdered indigenous women. So I'm really, really proud of this article. They did an amazing job. Um, and even if you know me, you might be able to learn new things. I feel like I opened up a lot more in this than I have in a lot of other um, articles. So I don't know if all of those things came out in the article, but just like in the interview, I think I shared more than I usually do. So, and then the other place too, if you don't want to read something. Oh, and just so you know, I we ran out of these, but this is my mom's copy. Um, but I just ordered more. I ordered 40 more copies and I already put them on the website and Lina should be um sending them out like this week or early next week so um if you still need a copy or if you want a copy then we do have them on the website again i'll put the link in the bio thing i don't need to say that um i'm just used to you know instagram lives and instagram videos so helping people find things where this is easier because i can just link everything in there um, okay, anyways, the other place to, we did a podcast interview with Nick Collage um, a few years back. I haven't listened to it. Gosh, I think I was still maybe in my house when I did that. 2019, no, so we had the Dye Studio. Um, I think I was talking in my house though, so that's why I thought about that. Um, and that I remember being a good interview too. Um, and talking about, you know, just being a woman in business and a mom in business. So I will link that as well. Um, I think that's it for like, if you need resources on where to find more about us. Those are good places to start. Um, and then I'm just going to talk a little bit about what a couple of things that we have going on. Uh, I did a live video earlier this week, so if you want more details about this, you can go there because I really went into depth answering questions. But we are starting a new subscription. It's called the Indigenous Collective, and we are getting permission from Indigenous artists to use their art as a muse, basically, for colorways. Um, it's a 100 gram skein once a month, and it's going to be really fun. I'm excited to share with you other artists, um, other indigenous artists. And I think that it's going to really grow and turn into something amazing. Um, the first month is in June. So you have basically until June 8th to sign up to be, to get Junes. It never ends and you can just like keep subscribing or you could pause or you can cancel whatever you want um and then so i always hear really weird things in this building because right up there is my landlord's and that is like their floor and it's really low because i'm on the mezzanine up here so i can never tell if people are coming in the door or if they're upstairs and then, I don't know if you guys will hear this at all, pick it up, but um, in, you know, behind where you guys are at, there's a big brick wall. And there are these, I should just show you, but um, I don't want to have to move the camera and get it settled again. I'll take a picture and I will put it on Instagram. Um, but we have basically like these window holes that are in the brick and you can like open them up and from the outside of the building they're just great so we get baby birds um and all all the time like year round these babies are being born so i can hear them right now chirping and then they'll get a little bit older and get really loud and honestly pretty annoying but i don't know what time i'm not gonna move them so just deal with it uh, okay, so last weekend I was in Maryland for Maryland Sheep and Wool, and then also my good friend Dami Hunter opened up um, her new shop, Magpie Fibers. 
I think somebody's here, but that's okay. Um, she opened up her new shop, Magpie Fibers, and it is this gorgeous little shop in downtown Frederick, Maryland. Um, when I say somebody's here, it's not a customer, it's an employee, just FYI. Um, her shop downtown, if you're ever in Frederick, Maryland, you have to go and visit. It is so adorable and cute and actually adorable is not even the world. It's like so sophisticated and it's literally one of the most beautiful shops I've ever seen. Her style and her taste though are so impeccable. And so her team just did such an amazing job putting that all together. I'm so proud of them. And they, yeah, it was just amazing. Um, go on our Instagram, you can see some pictures on there. And again, if you're ever in Frederick, make sure that you go. It's, or near Frederick, it's just beautiful. So while I was there, I'm just gonna show you a couple things that I picked up. Um, I got, they have this new base called Plume. It's 75% cashmere and 25% silk. So it is bougie yarn. Um, it's 25 grams, 315 skeins, and it is definitely on the higher end. This actually might be the most expensive yarn that I have ever bought. I think it is well worth it. It is just so soft. Um, this colorway is called Bougie Beaver. And then I got this colorway, um, Midnight Train to Georgia. And it's just like a really basic blue. Um, my son is a big football player and I do a lot with the schools through Sisters United. And then I'm also on the Great Falls Public School Foundation Board. So I'm always trying to like support school stuff. And this is their color is this boo blue. Great Falls High, go Bison. Um, so I'm like prepping for football season next year. And so I'm making, I made this cowl while I was there. It was such an easy knit. Um, Damie had knit one and she cast on, she cast on a hundred stitches and did hers like three by two ribbing. I cast on 102 stitches and just did a uh, two by two rib. And I just knit, like I literally knit. And then I think I did like an inch rib on this side and I did like probably an inch, and a half rib on this side, you'll never tell. Um, it's so light, so soft. And then it's just a super cute little cow. Oh, it actually looks good with this sweater. Oh, I'll talk about this sweater too. Um, so yeah, just like a really fun, easy knit. And then I got another skein because before I had left, Xander had dyed me this, which matches perfectly. Um, this is on Recollect. I think we're gonna actually make this a colorway because I think it's really pretty. Um, it's just like a really nice blue color. And I'm gonna put the two of them together to make probably the um, that Pearl Soho, like really simple ribbed hat. Um, super soft. And then with this one, I, I'll probably either combine it with Recollect for something, or I might just make more of these because honestly, I will wear these a lot in the winter time, just throwing this over being soft and like simple. I don't need anything super fussy. So there's that. Um, I also got, they have a dyed in the skein. So it's dyed in the wool. Um, spin cycles dyed in the wool that hasn't been dyed. It's just been spun and they sent it to make pie fibers for um, To dye for them. So I'll show you what I got it's in my stash back here um, Castaway is one of my favorite colors Make pie makes so this is what I got and it's really um, it's pretty it's like kind of crunchy and just has, I love the twist on it. It's beautiful. And obviously it's going to go well with dyed in the wool. So um, I just got it for my stash. I don't know what I'll do with it. I got, I think, four skeins. I have enough for a sweater. I had knit a sweater out of um, one of their bases and it was too small for me. And so I gave it away. And now I've lost weight and I regret giving that sweater away. And Twilight Shades in it was so pretty. So... 
What do you do with that one? Um, okay, so this sweater right here, the Arbusto, I knit this, gosh, probably 2018. Um, it is in issue six of Lina, but now it's available for individual um, release. And it's by Rosa Palmer. Um, and I knit it in Pishkin, Gary Cooper. And if you look at the magazine photos, it's a lot like looser and um, just a little bit more drapey. But I made mine just kind of a nice like waist length, um, not too long, but not cropped either. I really like the length. And then the sleeves are just like a little bit shorter, um, just because that's, I guess, the way I like it. And it has all of these um, bobbles all over it. And the thing I love most about this sweater is that when you're knitting it, you're knitting it inside out. So you don't see these bobbles. You're just like, you just like poke the bobbles through. So when you're done and you like turn it inside out, it's this really magical like surprise because you have all of these bobbles. So yeah, this is one of my favorite sweaters. I wear it all the time um, and it fits really well. So that is what I'm wearing. Um, just looking at my little notes here. Um, yep, went to Maryland. I don't think I really have anything else to say about that. It was just such a really lovely time. It was so good to see so many people. Um, it was a little overwhelming at first, just being around that many people. And I get overwhelmed anyways. Um, but it was, yeah, it was just really, really nice to see everyone. And then I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, and I didn't get much there. I got a sheepskin and I got some lotion. Actually, I can show you guys this because it's on my desk. Um, it's by Utopia. It's the best hand cream ever and it's made out of sheep's lanolin and, um, silver birch and willow. And actually, um, Olga from Jazzy, Olga Jazzy Knits, she, we were hanging out with her, um, and she like opened hers up and let us all try it and then we all ran to this to find it so the stuff is awesome oh and they have um soaps all kinds of things but love that so that was another thing i got there and besides that we just hung out and knit a lot which was lovely actually finished a project too um and i can show you guys what i'm knitting right now i am working on a test knit um, her Instagram handle is knitting at knitting ruined my life. Um, and she, I can pull out this. It's all like wet and rained on and kind of messy. But this is a test knit. And I'll just show you the schematic maybe you can see the best. And it is the cowgirl crop. And so it has these little hats and boots on it. And I think it's so cute and it is a quicker project for me, which is what I need. And I thought it would look really cute in our window display. So that's kind of what I'm making it for is the window. I'm making it in my size, which is, I have a 38 inch bust. And if you're wondering about this sweater, um, this has like very little ease. I can't remember what size I did, but I do have a 38 inch bust, so. You know, though, I bet when I knit this, I had a 40 inch, so maybe it's closer to that. Um, yeah, anyways, I'll show you the colors I'm doing. And I got this far. So trying to make it so you can see those little cowboy hats. There we go. That's a messed up right there. Um, my main color that I'm using is Man Mardigan. And one thing that people also requested heavily is that I talk about my colorways and like the inspiration behind them. So I will do that. Um, and I'll probably just do it like every episode when I'm talking about colors, maybe sometimes more intentional. But I can tell you guys about all of these colors. This is Mad Mardigan. It's like an orangey brownish I don't even know how to describe it 
and Mad Mardigan is inspired by the movie Willow, and um, Val Kilmer is Mad Mardigan in that, and he is one of my favorite actors. I love him so much. I love the movie Willow. I think that a lot of natives, like, love Willow. I don't really know what that is. Maybe it's just my family, but, um, yeah, so. Mad Mardigan's my main color. And then for the ribbing, and I should tell you guys too that um, I had Knit Graffiti pick these. Um, Leslie from Knit Graffiti picked my colors out. She, um, I love the way she picks out colors and I never am able to like, I always go to my same go-tos. It's like green and we have a color Willow Creek and I do like Gary Cooper, Evergreen and Willow Creek are my go-to. So I wanted to step outside of my box. So she picked um, my colors for me. And the ribbing is in Juniper, and this is all in Juicy DK. The pattern comes out, I believe, like late June, maybe early July. So that will be fun. I'll let you guys know. Obviously, I'll probably have kits for it. Um, Juniper was a colorway that I did for Marie Green a long time ago, probably 2017. Um and she named it. So that's why that's named Juniper. And then the cowboy hats were Namu. This is also another like big go-to for me. And Namu is the Blackfeet word for bee. And it reminds, this color reminds me of echinacea, like the inside of an echinacea flower. And I don't know why I like my brain works this way, but I usually will think of one thing and then it spirals into a name. So it's never quite exactly what it would be. Like you'd think a, a bee would be yellow, but when I think of a bee, I think of a bee landing on echinacea. So, ooh, and this color is... It's not Lulu. Who's downstairs? Denise? Alyssa? Maybe they left. That's creepy. I was just gonna see what if they knew what colorway this is. I'd have to run downstairs. Um, I'll put it in the notes. How about that? It's not Lulu. Is it Mango Margarita? Is somebody downstairs? It's just a freaking ghost then. Because um, I can definitely hear. Or maybe they have headphones in. I don't know. It could be Mango Margarita, but on this Juicy DK, I can't quite tell. I thought I was so prepared. That's okay. I'm just going to list it. I'll list all of the colors. Um, this color is Lulu, and I was going to use it in the band for the hats, but I changed my mind. So it's not even going to go in there, but I love this blue color. And this is named after, um, a niece cousin of ours. And, um, she's just really special to us. And this color reminds us of her. So that's Lulu. No, no, Libby Lou, Libby Lou, sorry. Now I'm getting all discombobulated. Um, yeah, Libby Lou, this is not Lulu. I think that this is Mango Margarita. I gotta look, I don't have any of my tags. I just reused my tags, so. Okay, and then more Mad Mardigan. And you need two skeins of this, and then like not very much of the other one. So if we do kits, I'll do um, like half skeins or something like that, mini skeins for those. So that is what I'm knitting. I'm excited to work on this this weekend and I want to get through the yoke and split for the sleeves and I'm just going to make it a cute little crop. So it's kind of a fun, fun project. Um, there's a lot of really cute crop sweaters coming out right now or like t-shirts too. Um, I know Native Knitter has one maybe coming out today and also Caitlin Hunter has a cute little t-shirt too. So, they're fun things. 
that I'm sure I'll be casting on and not finishing. That's one thing you'll get to know about me in this podcast is I like to start things, but do I finish them? Not really. Um, okay, I'm going to try to keep these um, like episodes under a half an hour. So I'm about 25 minutes right now. Um, I'll just talk about what I just started reading. And then this will also be a part of the giveaway. So um, I just started the sentence by Louise Erd Erdrich, um, is how you pronounce her name. And this is probably backwards for you guys. So um, it's called The Sentence. And her books are some of my favorite. The Night Watchman is amazing. Um, I think that The Night Watchman will most likely be an inspiration for a colorway. Um, for the Indigenous Collective. So I thought it would be fun to uh, like announce that one a little bit earlier, maybe like a month before, and then that way everyone can read the book and then you can get your colorway. So, but I just started, I like I downloaded it and I literally think that I've gotten like one or two pages in. I read on a Kindle um, at night. The only time I read is at night before I'm going to bed. So my usual MO is that I start a book and it takes me so long to get through the first chapter because I fall asleep right away. And then once I get into the book, like I can stay awake for a little bit longer. So it usually takes me about a mm, couple weeks to a month to finish a book um, only because I read at night and if I can't sleep. Um, so I'm going to give away this book and I'm also going to give away a skein of magpie plume. Um, not this particular color. I have another color that's like this really beautiful purple color. Um, I just forgot to grab it. So I'm going to give away this and the made pie plume and you can um, just subscribe and you know share with your friends and maybe you'll have to comment below. Yeah subscribe and comment for the giveaway. I think that's how that works seems right to me if you comment and then subscribe especially um i'm new to the youtube so it will take me a while uh i'm excited to start reading this and to be honest i'm not even sure what this book is about like i said i just kind of um okay this is funny I was just watching a YouTube or a video interview with Louise Erdrich um, and in it they talked about Birch Book Birch Book the bookstore um, and how that there is a ghost that lives there and this is about a small independent bookstore in Minneapolis is haunted by the bookstore's most annoying customer. So I wonder, there must be like a correlation there. Now I'll have to do a deep dive. Let's find out, let's read it and let's find out. So um, if you guys wanna read this with me, let me know and we could talk about it. Um, you know, I don't know if I'll talk about it in every podcast, but we could talk about it in a, every couple weeks. So, um, and I think I'll do these, I think I'll, I'm going to shoot for two podcasts a month, and it might be a little bit more, and it might be a little bit less. Um, so that's kind of that. And it's Friday today. We have this mimosa challenge that we are doing tomorrow. It's the Great Day of Mimosa Challenge. So um, it's a lot of bars and restaurants and one yarn shop that's participating. I thought it would be a fun way to get people in. And also I love bartending and making cocktails for people. So um, make sure to like watch on Instagram for all of that. Our cocktail or our mimosa is going to be fabulous. And we just, Great Falls makes it really easy. We just had to get a um, catering license from our landlords who already have a beer and wine license. And I had to take a safe serve thing, certificate. So pretty easy. So we'll be serving up. Uh, mimosas tomorrow and besides that just hopefully getting through the yoke in my sweater um 
if you guys have any specific questions you want me to answer about knitting techniques anything um let me know and you can just comment questions and then i am gonna set up where i have um like a google form that you can answer those questions i just haven't quite done that yet so all right well i'm at exactly a half an hour and um thank you guys so much for joining me and i'll see you next time